Welcome back to Morning Trade Live. We continue to focus on artificial intelligence, this artificial intelligence trade. Sanjay Poonan, CEO, Cohesity, is with us. Tell us a little bit about what you do on the daily, what Cohesity does, because we've got to talk about AI and the outlook. Uh, thanks, Nicole. Nice to talk to you again. Uh, yeah, we are a company that's the market share leader in uh, what's called data security and resilient solutions. And we protect customers' data from ransomware attacks. So we're very heavily focused on security. But about two years ago, we began to discover that the large amount of data, we protect about 200 exabytes of the world's data, was also a treasure trove of information for our customers for AI. So we started working with NVIDIA and the public clouds, Google, Microsoft, and Amazon. NVIDIA became an investor in our company on top of Amazon and Google who are already investors in our company. And now we're using that data for asking questions on it, asking you know, um, generative AI type of questions. Think of it like Copilot or ChatGPT on this large amount of data. That's been a major breakthrough that I wouldn't have expected. So that's the way in which we are intersecting security in AI in our category. We're well over a billion ARR company and you know private right now, but I hope to go public in the future. Is there a way to really sort of gauge how much of a threat um, this ransomware, these attacks? I mean, as technology improves on the daily, you, I would have to imagine the attacks and the hacks and the threats become more prevalent each day. That's right. In fact, a significant amount of the way in which the security industry works is using artificial intelligence and machine learning, not necessarily generative AI, which is more recent. Think of that generative AI like ChatGPT. But the way in which we discover anomalies, the way in which diseases are often discovered in healthcare, a lot of the machine learning and AI algorithms detect patterns and viruses and so on. We apply that same type of tech to anomalies and data, anomalies in the firewall, and anomalies in the endpoint. And those machine learning algorithms have gotten better. Now, that can have a good purpose for people like us that are trying to fight the bad guys. But remember, the bad guys are also using AI and ML to develop ransomware as a service and so on. So we've just got to, we've got to be right all the time, Nicole. The bad guys need to be right only once. Exactly. Um, well, when you talk about what you're doing now, I mean, I know we are going to talk about mergers and acquisitions in the industry as well. Um, but for your enterprise customers today, I mean, what's on the agenda in the near term? Yeah, you just mentioned M&A. Uh, in our industry, we uh, participated in, and orchestrated one of the largest M&As in our industry. We became about three times our size. So I described over 1.5 billion in AR with an acquisition of the number two in the space, a company called Veritas, we were number seven. And now number seven acquiring number two has now become number one in the space. So we orchestrated that last year, announced that and closed that, announced that last year, January, closed at the end of the year 2024. We've had about six or seven now months, the, uh, the integration's going really well. And that's made us a bigger and more profitable growth company. We believe we were fast growing cohesively, but not so profitable. The company we acquired was not as fast growing, but immensely profitable. We put the two together. Now, what does, does it help customers? They get a bigger and better company that can invest more in R&D. We have 13,000 customers, and especially in industries like banks, we are very, very strong. Tell me about some of the problems that the customers or the clients face. I mean, what are some of the questions that they ask you or what they're concerned about? Yeah, if you take some of the, the sectors, we're very strong. Let's start with banking. And I know many of the banks are reporting next week, so I'm wishing them well. Many of them are our biggest customers. They've got regulatory pressure to make sure that the data they collect, often that's customer data, sometimes that's investor data, uh, is absolutely safe from attack. So they'll often have a very orchestrated strategy for security that often includes three copies of the data. They may have a first copy, a second copy in the data center, and a third copy in a deep archive, uh, which what's called a cyber fault. So their security strategies are very well thought through. There's a defense in the perimeter, layers of defense, and a well thought through orchestrated uh, security strategy. They're often the ones that get attacked the most, but also spend the highest in security. Now you take that on the other hand to another vertical where we're very strong. We have almost a thousand customers in healthcare. These are both payers, providers, and pharma life sciences companies. 
Hospitals are under relentless attack. Why? Because they've got medical records of consumers. Many hospital and companies in the healthcare sector have succumbed to these ransomware attacks, and often it takes a long time to recover. One of the advantages of our technology is we uh, have the fastest cyber recovery of anybody in the industry because of the power of our technology. So these are the types of problems we're doing. Then more recently, what we've started to do with many of these companies, here's, there's an example in, the, in Europe of a, a Netherlands company now that started to leverage that, com that data now for competitive advantage with AI. That's the part I'm super excited on top of all of what we do in security. I also think about when people invest in AI, we're waiting for all these companies to monetize AI. People are jumping in with two feet all about AI um, and cloud companies and their investments are pretty significant. What's the risk? I mean, should investors be factoring in some kind of risk that you say there is some worries with that because they may be putting all their eggs in one basket and in just investing in AI companies? Yeah, I think you could think of AI sort of like a hourglass. Um, at the bottom of the stack are the infrastructure companies and hardware that are absolutely making money in AI. Best evidence by NVIDIA and look at their market cap, well over four trillion. They are an investor in us, a key partner. They picked one company to invest, so we're very excited about the work going on there. But there's other hardware companies and players in that service provider space like CoreWeave that's gone public. Um, in the top of that hourglass, you have LLMs. Uh, and, and sort of, you know, companies that are doing um, applications for AI. We're an example of a company in that infrastructure and application space. And there could be companies that are using that in the SaaS space, like Microsoft and Salesforce and Adobe. And they're, I think, starting to show that there's value to create there. In the middle, I think it's going to be a lot of sort of question as to whether LLMs are one example where I think value is starting to be created. But there's a lot of companies in the middle of that that are trying to do something with AI, AI washing infrastructure. Um, it's not clear how much they're going to make money. So time will tell. And I think the best way we encourage both private and public investors is to really look at the use cases. The use case that I describe for us is a very tangible use case that leads to value and we're selling it. Uh, and a lot of the others are just going to be hype that there's, the, the use cases are going to evaporate and there's probably not going to be a lot of money made. Yeah, and when you think about all the names in the world of AI, are there any companies um, that are, because I, I know clients are, are always asking about, they want to make money in their portfolio. Are, are there any of, I'm not asking for stock recommendations, but the parts that are exciting in the AI world, are there companies that stand out to you that you are excited to watch now in the next few years? Yeah, many of them are public companies, but I'm also a private investor in private companies. So at the bottom of that sort of stack are companies like NVIDIA, CoreWeave, I'm watching them closely. And then certainly we'll have to see how the chip companies like AMD and others, uh, you know, catch on to that wave and maybe long term even Intel. At the top of that stack are companies like Salesforce and Microsoft and Google, um, you know, others who are using AI in applications. And if they really start to take up, Google's a good example of a company that should really have a tremendous advantage as they think about their power and search, Gemini and so on. Um, Amazon could be another one that does where. Um, in the middle, a lot of private companies are going to have to watch. Um, and the, the, a lot of the, the you know, investors, private companies are investing in companies. Many of them are very overhyped in valuation. Uh, you know, venture capital people are chasing a lot of this. They've got funds that are pouring money into it. There could be a hype cycle there at some point in time. Some of that is definitely going to deflate. Yeah, understood. Um, and then when it comes to the talent that's needed to continue to battle and build AI, I mean, for yourself, you must have a really talented team at Cohesity, coupled with what we're hearing about the battle for talent from Microsoft and, uh, and Meta and OpenAI and so on and so forth. Tell me about that. It's a very, it's probably the most important question, Nicole. Look at what's happened with Meta and their race for all of this talent. Hiring, hiring people from scale AI, rating people from open AI. It is a talent war out there. Now, we are not looking to participate in that level of talent, but we are looking for incredible talent, uh, often out of colleges. And every new college grad right now is learning out open AI. And I tell the folks who have been longer out of college, like myself, we've got to learn. Uh, I didn't know what retrieval augmented generation and gender of AI deep techniques were, but we've got to go back to school. And if I, as a CEO of my company, doing, I talk to other CEOs, they're doing the same thing. 
We all have to have a growth mindset to learn. And you know, the best people to learn from are often our kids. You ask your kids and their entire life now is oriented around chat GPT. I'll tell you a short story. My daughter, as she was learning physics, I was starting to dust off my high school physics to try and teach her. One day on a business trip, I came back from, she said, dad, you've been displaced. I've been using chat GPT to help me, not to cheat, but to help me in my, uh, my tests and I don't need you anymore. That's the world we live in, Nicole. And we all have to build that growth mindset of learning about AI, even as we continue to, to build the best talent in this country and different parts of the world in AI. Yeah, that physics book. What are you going to do with that? A paperweight? What do I do with those old Britannicas? Remember those? Uh, yeah, right. They are. They're figuring it out. They're la they're learning at mock speed at the same time, you know, okay. chat GPT takes some of their brain power too. Good for you and your daughter and keep learning and uh, nice to hear all the stories too, Sanjay. Thank you for sharing that. Sanjay Poonin, CEO, Cohesity. Thanks for being on with us today.